Okay, hi everybody. This is Patricia Corey coming to you on Beyond the Matrix, the program that makes you think out, well, it doesn't make you, but it certainly invites you to think outside the box of convention. And today I have with me the lovely Helen, so Helen Sewell, I hope I pronounce it right. You know, I had her husband Andy Thomas on recently and he said, well, you really should talk to Helen about that. And uh, she was kind enough to agree to come on and many people were asking, yeah, 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 we'd love to have her on. So uh, let me just give you a quick background about Helen. She's a professional astrologer with 35 years of experience and she does personal consultations, which we're all gonna want. So uh, I will be leaving that information, how you can reach her in the text in this, um, in this tape interview so that you don't have to uh, scribble and try to find a pen in the middle of the, talk. She, uh, so I'm saying she gives personal consultations. She writes for astrological journals and websites. And she's particularly keen on spreading the word on the benefits that astrology can bring to people and helping us to understand the bigger world, the bigger picture that is in world events, you know, and I have to say that sometimes astrologers are, they, they know so much and it's just like this is the fourth house of the plows of Pluto and then it's moving in. And a lot of us don't really get it. So I'm hoping Helen can give us the picture. What the hell is going on in 2020 in the stars? And surely she's going to be sharing with us some enormous energies because something's got to explain this 2020 debacle. I wanted to also say that Helen's a tutor for the Mercury Internet School of Psychological Astrology, which is called MISPA. Uh, which is set to cater for larger amounts of international people who are keen to get qualified in astrology. So perhaps that might come up in the talk. And I'm particularly interested in the fact that she's also trained with the infamous Liz Green in psychological astrology. This is a highly qualified woman and we're grateful. Thank you, Helen, so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you. I'm really looking forward to this. Me too. So where do we start? You know, what? <laughs> What is yeah. happening here? Yeah, well, so many people have, have asked, uh, was it predicted? Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely, was it predicted? And I can say, yes, it was. It was um, in fact, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a very famous astrologer called um, Andrew Andre Borbolt, is a French astrologer. Uh, he unfortunately died last year. Uh, 98, I think he was. Bless him. But back in uh, 2011, he uh, wrote an article. And in it, I'll, I'll just quote this. He says, it may well be that we are seriously threatened by a new pandemic in 2020. Wow. A period which is at the lowest point in the cyclic index for the whole of the 21st century. So he wrote that back in 2011. Um, but he uses a, an interesting method whereby um, he looks at the cycles of the planets. And when you get uh, some of the heavy weights, if you like, the slower moving ones, all um, together in a portion of the zodiac, then you get things like wars or pandemics, you know, that revolutions, that, that kind of thing. Um, so I thought that that was really interesting. I mean, I myself, I remember I was giving a talk in um, Ireland in the autumn and we'd already had, you know, quite a difficult year and people were going, oh, you know, what's going to happen next year? And basically I, I said, well, it doesn't look good. It really doesn't look And they're going, no, no, it can't get worse than this. <laughs> And, and I said, well, you know, the, the, the two heavyweights of the solar system, Saturn and Pluto, came together in January. And that's really when the whole thing kicked off. Um, and you get things, words like, uh, for, for Saturn, he's like old father time. And before we discovered the three outer planets, he was the one that marked the boundary. He's like, you know, the strict parent that shows us... Um, uh, lack, um, you know, poverty, hard work, uh, constriction, all, all these kinds of words come up with Saturn. And when it, when it combined with Pluto, you know, the, the dark lord of the underworld that creates big evolutionary changes, 
this this is uh, you know important that this marks a, a kind of an epoch changing year. Okay, so um, you're saying that the two of them are conjoined. Is that what you said? When when they um, Saturn moves a bit faster than, than Pluto, so it quickly caught up with Pluto until they came together in in the heavens and uh, in the sign, the earthy sign of Capricorn. And that rules things like institutions, the government, uh, authority. So all, you know, the, these things, it's, it's, it, it even rules kind of the structures of society. And if you think what's been going on this year, it's been quite incredible. I mean, I'm sure in the States you, you've had like long-term institutions um, really faltering, you know, we, we, we had like big shops like Woolworths uh, closing, um, you know, th things like this the whole time that Saturn and Pluto have been in Capricorn. But I, I was interested that you referred to Pluto as the dark lord of the underworld. Yeah. I've never really heard Pluto described as that, but you know, it's really fascinating since we are seeing this attempt and I think successful, although painfully slow, to bring down the cobble that is in charge, well, let's say that's, that's got its claw on our planet. And so I find that that's a very interesting combination and I'd love you to elaborate more on, on that. How does, how does it look for, for the project? <laughs> it's more than a project, but the, the battle. I mean, some people are referring to this moment as the ultimate Armageddon battle and uh, not as we perceived it to be the the biblical Armageddon, but the the battle of darkness and light in full throttle. And uh, so, how does that speak from the stars? Mm -mm. Well, if you, if you, the thing with the three outer planets, we know when they were discovered, so we know what was what energies were coming into the collective, and gave us. Clue, you know, it gave us a lot of clues as to the meaning of the planets. And with, with Pluto, so it was discovered in 1930, which is sort of bang in between the two world wars. Um, and it was like, you know, the, the, this uprise from, from the fires of hell, if you like, um, this uh, plutonic energy coming, coming up. And, and indeed, you know, in the Second World War, we, we did have the, um, the atom bomb, uh, which would be very much as associated with Pluto. But, and, and of course, at that time, we had the rise of the Third Reich that wanted ultimate power and control over the whole world. Um, it rules, and it also rules things like the occult. And it was well known that the, the, the Third Reich used the occult in its practices. Definitely. And, um, I mean, more positively, the other thing that was coming, coming up was the birth of depth psychology with Freud and Jung. And um, if, you, if you think then of the, of the underworld, because when uh, Jupiter had usurped his father Saturn and he was dividing up the kingdoms, he gave Neptune the rivers and the seas and he gave Pluto the underworld. And you might think, oh, you know, that's a lesser inheritance. But it wasn't because his law is irrefutable. Nobody was allowed in, in the underworld. Um, but the, the word Pluto literally translates as riches. Because um, if, you, if you think of the underworld being a metaphor for our unconscious, there's lots of very difficult and dark emotional um, stuff in there, if you like. But if we go into therapy, we can transform it into the light. And so that's why um, Pluto, um, not only in, in the underworld itself, had, had huge riches, in, in our own psychology, in our own unconscious, we have a lot of riches there. If we, if we can transform the darker aspects into the light, and that's why, you know, Pluto is, is the planet to do with evolution and transformation. It rules birth, death, sex, all these mysteries of life. It's, um, yeah, hugely powerful. And so, how most people are wondering from this because we're hearing all 
you know, there's so much information available about portals and alignments and, you know, just metaphysical um, vastness of topics. But I, I want to, I, I'm with you now because I love the really grounded astrology, which the scientific approach as well as the um, emotional and psychological aspects that you're expert in. Um, people are wondering, needless to say, is it going to get better here? What's going to happen in the, by the end of the year? Most people are, are eager to get out of 2020 as if there's some sort of numerical, logical cutoff point to uh, energies changing. But what are the stars and the planets saying for us as far as this period? And especially knowing that we've got this, this big event in November with the American um, election. Yeah, yeah, abs absolutely. Well, it's been such a fascinating year, really, already, uh, before I just talk a little bit about coming into the, the winter solstice, which is, you know, <laughs> a very interesting point that we're going to reach. But um, yeah, so we, we've had Saturn and Pluto together. And this has been, you know, if you can imagine it being a signature for being locked away in our homes, the, the, these planets describe it to a T, you know, that feeling of, of like kind of panic as well. And we, we had lots of panic buying at the beginning of it. And then uh, when Jupiter also joined them, so we had a triple conjunction, then um, that brought in two things because Jupiter is, is the big gas giant of the solar system. It, whatever it touches, it really expands the whole thing and makes it global, which is exactly what happened. And the thing about um, Jupiter, because it's, it's a planet to do with exaggeration and acceleration, that's why it's associated with cancer, because uh, the, the disease, because it's like the way cells reproduce themselves so, so quickly. So you can imagine when, when um, Jupiter joined um, Saturn and Pluto, it made the whole thing much bigger and much more global. And that's why it became a global pandemic. The other side of Jupiter, though, the great benefic, is, is um, we saw a, a lot of um, kind of social work going on. You know, a lot of people, and, and this was echoed with um, Neptune, the planet to do with um, selfless service. People, I mean, over here in the UK, people were asking volunteers to sign up for, um, you know, to help in the hospitals and everything. And then my, my daughter herself, she, she did. And... Um, like hundreds of thousands of people signed up, even uh, retired doctors who are in, the, in that um, group, um, a very vulnerable group, they, they did. There was an awful lot of selfless service going on and compassion for, for the, the, the sick and the dying. Um, you know, it wasn't all bad, was it? We, we did see, right. you know, the, the, these other faces of what's reflected in, in the heavens at the, at the same time, if you like. So um, with Saturn and Jupiter, they come into exact conjunction at the winter solstice. And this is really significant and it's going to be at naught degrees Aquarius. And so a lot of people are saying, well, you know, of course, this is the advent of the age of Aquarius. Yeah. And if you, if you think back, um, a lot of astrologers think that the star of Bethlehem back at the beginning of the age of Pisces was, um, that, so that was in 7 BC, was the star of, of Bethlehem, which marked the advent of the age of Pisces. So a lot of people are saying, well, you know, this conjunction with, with Jupiter and Saturn in nought degrees Aquarius is the, is the door opening into the age of Aquarius. So you can see how excited astrologers are, um, have been about the, this upcoming conjunction. 
And this marks a whole new kind of chapter because uh, Saturn will have moved out of its own sign of Capricorn and it, it's been there for the last two and a half years um, and has joined Jupiter. So we, we've got that combination of um, structure and things being made very real uh, with Saturn. And then we've got Jupiter, which is to do with hope, optimism and in the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign and I know a lot of people think it's a water sign because it's the water bearer but um, no it's it's an air sign and uh, people are very hopeful about the age of Aquarius. I, I mean I think every age has its own gods the same as if you can imagine sitting on the cusp between the age of Aries, which was the previous age to Pisces, this age, um, where they had a whole pantheon of gods. So it was like, um, can you imagine what that was like for, for all those gods to then disappear with the age of Aries and then the, the, the new gods um, with Jesus and Buddha and Hinduism, um, the three main religions basically, Islam. Um, Islam. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, they came, came into the fore during the age of Pisces. Um, and Pisces is very much to do with, um, you know, our, our interest in the non material world, actually, the spiritual the um the numinous if you like our connection that that deep longing in all of us to return back to the source in lots of ways and so um there's been an awful lot of interest in the afterlife during the age of pisces and and the thing about aquarius is that uh, the old ruler was saturn and the new ruler is uranus which rules new technology and, and things like um, uh, overturning the old for the new. Now, um, this is a completely different feel to it because Aquarius is much more scientific. It's much, the air signs are to do with uh, rationality and logic. Oh. So, you know, we can already see that coming in. I, I'm sure it's the same in the States where it's, science 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 you know we must have proof for this that and the other uh, there's less of that kind of blind faith that that we've had over the last um you know two thousand years or so and hopefully we're going to be seeing more of a merging of spirit and science hopefully absolutely hopefully because um neptune which rules pisces uh, we we it's still there you know, it's, it's still playing a big part in our lives. So there, there will always, but, it, but it's like the backdrop to society, if, if you know what I mean. It's, it's like, um, you know, what's, what's come into the ether and it's very much to do with science and, and Saturn is, is everything to do with the real world. Um, if you if you said the material world so say the real world whatever that we define that yeah in. yeah yeah exactly it's the material world it's it's uh, it's our physics it's the incarnation into our physical body okay it's um and if you think about it it takes what 29 years roughly for, for saturn to go around the whole zodiac and every seven eight years we get the square or the opposition and then the incoming square and those times in our lives are usually quite important junctures. You, you might have heard of the, of the famous Saturn return about age 29. Yes, of course. So, you well, know, where, sorry. Where, we're, where, where we're faced with more um, things like responsibility. I, I wanted to ask you, so when you talk about the planets in, I, I don't know what the term was you said, in conflict, it sounded like you, you meant in conflict. Did I, did I not perceive that correctly? Um, when the planets are conjunct, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Well, what exactly is, for the lay person, 
What do you yeah. mean when you talk about planets being conjunct? Okay, so, so the planets are all moving around at different speeds around the sun. And sometimes the uh, faster moving ones will catch up with the slower moving ones. And when they come together, that's called a conjunction. Okay, fine. Thank you for that. So yeah. but now, so you're saying that Saturn, which, you know, what, the, what, the way you describe Saturn reminds me of the emperor in the Tarot. And I think that in fact, the card of the emperor is um, lorded over by Saturn. Same representation energetically. Uh, you're saying it's moving now, finally. Did I um, it's, it's coming out of uh, Capricorn and going into the sign of Aquarius. And that's when Jupiter is going to catch up with it. And so they're going to be together in the, in the heavens and it will, you know, be very bright. So that's why um, I referred back to uh, the star of Bethlehem. Gotcha. Because a lot of astrologers think that that's what it was. So you're saying that the bright, enthusiastic, powerful uh, energy, ebullient energy of Jupiter is then going to be affecting that oppressive, heavy, Saturnian. It will, it will. But then if you can imagine those, those two energies combining, okay. it's actually very beneficial because yeah, okay. you, you've got the, um, the, the soberness, if you like, of Saturn um, that is cautious. And, and so it's like expanding and moving forward and hopeful, but with caution. And, and you whatever, yeah, what, what, whatever um, Saturn touches, it makes it very real. Do you want to bring that into the obvious global question of what that means about this pandemic? And oops, did I make a faux pas? Yep, it's true. Plandemic is the way I describe it. Um, you know, we, we, everybody's grasping to know uh, what is going to happen to civilization. We certainly aren't going to be able to survive with this Gestapo-esque situation where we're hunkered down, where we're covered and hidden and masked. And um, Can you give, I mean, obviously, you can just tell us what your impression is based on the positions of planets, but um, we want to know. Please well, I, I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because those words where, where that you described, you know, sort of every, everything is that Saturn's world that, that um, you know, lockdown um, authoritarian uh, and when it's combined with Pluto, you know, you get that control coming in. It's he heavy stuff. Um, like, for instance, when, when Saturn and Pluto were opposite each other in the heavens, uh, you had 9-11. And that was, that was incredible because look at the changes that, that, that happened at that time. Changed the world forever. It changed the world forever. Exactly the same. As, as this time is exactly. going to change the world forever. And um, I mean, more pessimistically, uh, if, if you think of that uh, Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, Capricorn uh, rules governments, all the things that Saturn rule basically, because Saturn rules Capricorn. Um, we, we've seen kind of much more of a, a uh, control and power coming in to the equation. Espe well, Pluto moved into, into the uh, sign of Capricorn in 2008, and the first institution to kind of hit the wall was uh, the financial institutions. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, Pluto is the planet of uh, death, uh, rebirth. Um, so it's like, a, a, it gets rid of all the, the stuff that's not working anymore. But the thing is, it, it also rules primal fear. And if you think of the powers that be, the more fearful they are, the more they will want to control. So obviously with, with, the, with these planets going through Capricorn, uh, we've really seen the worst of it. 
Now, um, with Saturn moving out of Capricorn and going into Aquarius, uh, Aquarius is is kind of very different, really. It's it's very it's very much to do with humanity, um, causes, uh, the planet. Hum uh, it's very humanitarian. It's also to do with new technology. So we'll probably see, you know, again further advancements in that. Um, but being very social and. Like take a, a country like Australia. Australia is what's called uh, a double Aquarius because it's an Aquarian country and the ascendant of Australia. And yes, um, countries have charts as well. Um, they're very keen on conforming. Um, and I think, I was, I was very interested to hear that it looks like they're going to be the first country to bring in a cashless society. Um, I, I, I thought that... that uh, but isn't it already think, pretty much underway in, in the in Asian countries? I mean, um, China is almost cashless and I think... Yeah, I, I'm talking about the West, I suppose. Okay. Um, you know, the, the, the first Western country to go cashless, which is a big thing, really yeah. big thing. They're really pushing that. I mean, we're going to see that, I think, within 10 years, they're really pushing that all countries will be cashless and we are replaced with digital. And does that, does that is something that is the stars and the planets portend? Well, I, I think it's all part of, uh, of uh, coming into the age of Aquarius. Uh, you know, Aquarius is very different to Pisces. It's, um, if, if you just think of our homes, uh, uh, you know, a Piscean home, because Pisces is quite nostalgic, it loves its little knickknacks, you know, and to give us memories. Aquarius is cool, get rid of all that nostalgia, oh, bring wow. in clean lines, no clutter, um, big airy spaces. And more and more homes are, are getting that. Yeah, way. more and more. It's I'm like, one of them. Have been uh, exalting the idea of feng shui, and and you know, and of course, clutter seems to start uh, developing again. But I've been doing that constantly. I just don't want it. And lots of people, even the tiny house movement, where people are just saying, "I don't need all this stuff. I want less. I want to be streamlined." And so that's interesting that it's a characteristic of the of the age of Aquarius. That's exciting. Yes, yes. So so there's there's that because it's light and airy, and think of that. It's it's to do with and and because it's rational. That's why uh, you know the uh, you know the musical the uh, hair with the age of Aquarius, the dawning of the age of Aquarius, and they talked about two thousand years of peace. I think that's because um, it's a very rational sign. And um, if you think of uh, Pisces, it's watery. The water signs, they react strongly to things. Their emotions. Uh, with their emotions. And, and so they'll be quick to get into wars and retaliate and revenge and all, all those kinds of uh, emotional reactions that, that we've had. Aquarius is much more rational. So is it, so, are you describing a sort of Renaissance period then? This is more, this is, I think, more than possible. Because um, the thing about the moving from one age to another, it is the death of something. And I'm sure an awful lot of people can feel this um, collective anxiety. I, you know, I don't think there's a person on the planet that isn't feeling it in some degree. Yeah, exactly. Because it's the death of something which needs mourning, but we, we've got the anxiety because we don't know what we can feel that, that something is changing. Something big is changing. Huge. Um, huge. Uh, but because we don't know what it is, because our compass for, from, for the past 2,000 years is now gone. Um, so 
there's especially people who are sensitive i know a lot of my clients they they've been um really feeling it really feeling it and they're going i, I don't know why i feel so panicky and anxious um i just do and especially around new moons and full moons but if we can you know this crossover it could take another hundred years this crossover it's not a quick one day of events it, it's a gradual turning over of, of the of the time but we've been underway haven't we i mean entering into yeah. the stage it's already a decade or more yeah definitely i mean my personal belief was that um uh, 2012 w was quite pivotal because there were so many ancient cultures around the world that, that spoke of this time yeah you know and, and i remember because i was really involved with that shift in 2012 and speaking about it a lot and i i got some people writing to me and say you know december January 1st, well, Patricia, you were wrong, nothing happened. And it just makes me, it cracks me up when people see those rigid, that time space continuum uh, focus we still have about this linear time and these artificial dates and not being able to embrace the idea of evolutionary uh, epochs and uh, energy shifting and how it's not about linear time it's about and you know obviously <laughs> oh, sorry. I'll cut that. yeah exactly and, and who can who cannot say that uh, nothing has changed since 2020 2012. You know, exactly so much has changed and so, you know so it much, is so changing and it's it's huge and it's global and it's people are describing this as ascension I mean, people are seeking answers. So uh, there's the ascension mentality, there's the uh, Aquarian shift mentality, but overall, and then there's the political, global, the one world order and how we seem yeah. to be trying yeah. to prevent it. And there's just, it's, it's immense. And that is, you know, and I'll be honest with you, I never really thought about the fact that at this moment, part of the, what we're seeing I didn't make the correlation between this and the shifting into the Aquarian age, this yeah, pandemic. Yeah. Amazing. That's interesting stuff. I'm sure a lot of people are going to react to that. Yeah, no, I, I, I find it really fascinating. And but the other thing about Aquarius, all the signs are either masculine or feminine, but Aquarius is, uh, you know, ambidextrous. It's, <laughs> it swings both ways. Um, and... <laughs> Since since 2012, I, I, I'm sure it's probably the same in the States, but uh, like colleges now and schools have to have uh, gender neutral toilets. Um, this is coming in, Patricia. This really is. Yeah, it's, it's in. Uh, it's, it's already you know, in. It's already in. Example, and that's, you know, I, the fact that I have to, because I have complete empathy and respect for anyone who has an identity gender identity issue or uh not even an issue an issue would have a negative connotation so people that are in that experience um i have complete respect for but i really have a problem with having to change my pronouns to fit this situation so i've seen more and more in official letters where people are telling me what pronouns i'm allowed to use I have a problem with that. So I am not uh, fluid in that respect because I love language and I just can't bend it that much. Just can't do it. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Uh, but everything about uh, Aquarius, that what Aquarius rules is coming into uh, the collective. It, it really is. That's fascinating. Uh, and yeah, and the thing about Aquarius, uh, you have to bring in the opposite sign, which is Leo. And um, the, the thing about Leo is, is to do with leaders, whereas in Aquarius, there, there are no tall poppies. Everybody is regarded as equal. And funny enough, when, when I lived in Australia, um, you, you wouldn't tip somebody. 
because that's a way of saying no i'm i'm worth more than you or or it's to do with the inequality oh. aquarius is very much to do with equality that all human beings are equal and if you look at the whole kind of um me too movement and uh black lives matter that's exactly the other thing that that that's why it's come to the fore this year because because of these social issues uh are, are like hot on the agenda and even though like in the mid 60s um when saturn and pluto uh would were, were um, in in aspect then um this time because we're moving into the age of aquarius it's this th there's no going back now this is yeah. this is we feel it know. i think don't we we feel it this we this do. is not a transition this is not transitory this is permanent this, whatever is happening the, the best way to describe it is we're not going back and when they talk about normal see getting back to normal uh yeah normal well there's the term the new normal to define uh, yeah. where we're headed. but uh, i don't think that what we've understood to be normal will ever return and that's fraught with a lot of fear but a lot of excitement too because when people say oh my god patricia what, what, will we ever get back to normal i said well we we had a problem with normal that's why we wanted evolution <laughs> so what was normal was you know in many ways problematic and we were looking at it as a collective society at all of the ecological issues social issues uh, so let's move forward let's always move forward and hopefully um rectify and advance rectify the, the the wrongs but you know this transition period because for example the black lives movement uh has a very negative aspect at the moment will that swing in according to the astro astrological predictions right now it's very aggressive it's very it's very yeah. um extreme and isolating and separating so it's not serving that function of creating equality not yet but it feels like it's a pendulum that has to find its middle ground to from the extreme yeah. and then swinging back until finding a place where uh, it does represent equality. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, and, and, and that's the thing, um, what's, be, what's been happening over this year so far, because it's not just the pandemic. Uh, you know, there's other movements that, that, that are arising up at the moment. And also, yeah. uh, Mars, the, the god of war, um, that creates uh, passion and energy. Uh, back in, in March, it was going over Saturn and Pluto. Uh, like, like in this country, all of a sudden there was the war cabinet. We're going to fight the pandemic and this kind of thing. War talk, talk of war and um things were kind of uh, being quite aggressive now also in the autumn um especially october mars is going to be in a very difficult aspect to those planets because it moves fairly quickly you see it moves round and it's it's in what's called a square aspect so we can expect a lot more flashpoints you know, um, anybody that's got a grievance on a very um, deep level, you know, we're, we're talking about the weight of history here with Saturn Pluto. Uh, and people born under a, a Saturn Pluto uh, aspect, uh, people, funny enough, like um, Greta Thunberg, she uh, was born under a Saturn Pluto. They have a really serious look. It feels like they they've got the weight of the show, the the world on their shoulders, and um, they've got a, an almost um, it, it's like part of their destiny that they have to do something about it. You know, no matter what you feel about Greta, um, it's just interesting that as above, so below. You know, it, it doesn't, it, there's no kind of uh, judgment with the planets as such. It's just, it's like a, a mirror. It's a reflection of, of what's going on. And yeah, the world, the, 
I mean, the, the uh, Earth sign, so we've, we've got Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. We've got the, the planet to do with um, revolution in the earthy sign of Taurus. And also Taurus rules values. What do we really value? And uh, so many people are re-evaluating what is important for them in their lives, especially during this period with lockdown and everything, when, when you're sort of uh, contemplating, because it's like we, we came up against the buffers, didn't we? we it was a sudden halt. And yeah. a lot of people were going around in a complete daze. You know? And not a lot of people still are. <laughs> because I find it interesting that you're talking about this in the past tense, but here we are in, yes. August, in August, still in lockdown, still in the, you know, it, they're ramping it up in Portugal again because it was, they were starting yeah. to ease up and all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's appearing everywhere. It looks like we're going to be actually having this second round. And yeah. uh, so I'm interested in the, in the fact that you're talking about it in the past tense and wondering well, if that reflection of what you perceive uh, from the ast astrological point of view or just... Well, certainly till, certainly till the end of the year. Certainly till the end of the year, we'll see. That, and with the winter coming up, you see, they say it's going to get worse in the winter. Who knows? Um, yeah, but if they say that also, I don't want to get political here, but it's convenient because everybody's got to get their flu jab. But know. Uh, you know, what does it look like from the point of view of, of the astrological perspective? What are we looking yeah. at? I'm really curious about, okay, so we've talked about where we are at the moment. And then until the end of the year, we've got the election. We've got this. I'm very curious about your perceptions about the election because um, there's a lot of focus on that right now. And people are saying, and I'm one of them, don't be looking for any big changes until after the election because they're just squeezing, squeezing, squeezing more. And so I think that the um, advent of the second wave of this is all part of uh, keeping people in obedience yeah. and fear while this election hoo-ha happens. So can you elaborate on your perspective of where we're headed here in this next, uh, well, we're almost in winter again. Autumn. No, no, we're going into autumn. Not, we're, I don't want to miss autumn. <laughs> the reason no, I said no, that is I'm, I'm looking out the window at this dreary sight. It's just the middle of August and this beautiful island and it's just pouring rain and cloud and whatever. So, uh, but let's not skip autumn. <laughs> oh, so can you tell not, us what it looks like? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just as an aside, I, I really think it's interesting the, the way uh, like Donald Trump and uh, uh, also um, Xi Jinping and um, here, in, you know, there's a lot of leaders that Boris Johnson, they're all Gemini's. And, Is Donald Trump uh, a Gemini? Sorry? Donald Trump is Gemini? Yeah. I would have thought he was a Leo. Oh, he's got Leo rising. There you go. He's got Leo rising, absolutely. I mean, think of, you know, his golden hair, his golden towers, his, his golden face, you know. It's like, yeah, you, you, you often look more like your, your rising sign. That's interesting. Um, but the uh, Gemini is the, communica is the communicator, and he really brought tweeting to a new height. <laughs> He certainly, you know, well, you know, what he does is uh, he, he, he speaks from the gut. He doesn't have any screen. He's like a blunt force object. It's just here it comes. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. there's something ridiculous about that, but also refreshing because of all this rhetoric, this canned rhetoric that we get from politicians. Oh, we're going to, if we get in, we're going to, you know, raise lower taxes and we're going to improve the schools and blah 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 and trump comes in and just blows everybody away with the most you know off the wall he never I learned it he never learned to be a canned politician which uh is to his detriment and also to his benefit in many ways yeah that's right i mean he, he's his son is um next to uranus uranus he, he's the maverick of the solar system 
you know, he's impulsive and comes from left field and, you know, you, you can, it, it's, he's quite a character, isn't he? He really is. He is. Now, um, and the thing about uh, Gemini, because it's a, a dual sign and there is so much duality in the world at the moment. Um, we, you know, people are going, is this true? Isn't it true? Fake news, you know, all, all this. Um, because Gem Gemini is ruled by Mercury and the other face of Mercury, of course, is the trickster. And there's a lot of uh, tricky, tricksterish en energy um, going, up, going on at the moment. So it's, yeah, you're not quite sure. Smoke and mirrors, that sort of thing. And um, so with, with, I mean, America has got a major, major uh, transit coming up because um, it's to do with the planet Pluto. Okay, so like, like when I, I was describing 9-11, when Pluto goes over a, a sensitive point in the chart, um, it can feel like, uh, you know, being invaded by the dark lord of the underworld. It does feel and, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So before so you go on, can I just interject something here so that we all understand? I found it very interesting that you said plant, uh, countries have an astrological chart, which yes. I really never knew that. So when you're talking about America is going through something, are, is that what you're referring to, uh, that America's yes. astrological? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. How is that derived? America How does the country uh, get an astrological um, its own chart? Well, we, we did it, uh, I, I did it, you know, with, um, with Independence Day for America. Okay, okay, that uh, makes sense. 1776, isn't it? Um, yeah. And uh, so it's a cancer country. And that's why you have, uh, like when I visit uh, the States, I'm always kind of quite aware. I like to tune in to the energy of the country. And you, you, you know, the, the, there's often a, a reference, cancer rules, home, family, security. Um, and, and those words, that's why you have the famous, you know, mama's apple pie and um, often the firms are called the family. Um, there's often a lot of references to, to the family. And, and the whole thing about uh, security is very important. And it's got Sagittarius rising. And that means their kind of outlook on the world. It's, uh, if you think of Sagittarius, it's ruled by the, the centaur. If you think of the cowboy, and Sagittarius is to do with big horizons, and it's quite sort of bold and expansive. If, if you know any um, Sagittarians, it's to do with freedom and, um, yeah. That's my so rising sign, it sure fits. Right, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, you, you get a sense of a country. And, and the thing is that, uh, the people resonate with, with that country. Now, in America, Pluto is going to, what we're going, you're going to have what's called your Pluto return. And so uh, this, is, this is quite a major event because um, you know, it, it takes Pluto 270 odd years to go around the whole chart. It's got an elliptical orbit. So, um, it's a, a, a tricky one to calculate. You can spend any time from 12 to 30 years in one sign. Now, um, so a Pluto return, you would never have had one in, in your country's lifetime. So um, it's big. Uh, for instance, when the UK had uh, a Pluto return, that's when uh, we had the unification of the country, of, of, uh, the, of uh, the United Kingdom in 1801. Uh, so you're saying I, that America's going to see a unification because it couldn't be much more divided without a complete civil war. I know. Um, the, the thing about it is, is because it, it brings up Plutonian themes. 
It can't predict exactly what's going to happen, but it's going to be major. And at the same time, so this is in 2022, and at the same time, you've got what's called um, your Neptune opposition. So that means that Neptune has gone halfway round and it is, is opposing your, the natal Neptune. And what a Neptune is to do with, um, you know, all the non-material things. It's, it's like, what's the, what's the spiritual beliefs in the country? What, what, where are the, where's the compassion? Where's the selfless act? Um, and so the, it's, there's big transformations on, on both fronts here. Uh, I, I mean, it's difficult to predict exactly what's going to happen. You can only, I th for instance, I, I can only talk about um, past examples and every country will be different. And, and so it's um, to have your Pluto return, things, all issues to do with power and control come to the fore. Um, and also, because Pluto was discovered in 1930, I, I think any Pluto returns since then are going to be much more powerful. So, as you know, it's something to be aware of. It could, it could mean so many things. It could mean uh, like a breakdown, a complete breakdown, because Pluto, as I say, it rules death. Then you have the transformation and then you have a rebirth so these it's 2022 is going to be incredibly pivotal in okay. in, the, in the chart of the that sounds no like it. I, in power i'm a curious why you would say that because it's been discovered in 1930 yeah that it's going to be more powerful why would our knowledge of it affect the, the planetary force because it's um, it's come into the collective. Okay, good point. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you see what I mean? It's yes, it's I like it, it it it's uh, it really is um, a time. Sure, interacting with a global body of conscious beings, it's going to have more. That makes sense. More impact. So okay, 1922 yeah. for the U.S. sounds like. I mean. It sounds, when you say it's hard to predict, but it really does sound like it's going to be a, a sort of a devastating change. Um, well, it could, it could well be. It could well be. That, that's the thing. Um, but do you feel that it's a positive change? Because that's not what I'm, I'm picking up from you. What, what I believe, it's like with our leaders, um, we, we choose our leaders. So they are the mouthpiece for the collective of the country. Okay. For, you know, <laughs> so take that as, as w in whatever way you will. But yeah, they're, they're the mouthpiece. So they're a reflection of the consciousness of the country. Yeah. Do you think that and, uh, when I say do you think, I'm always referring to the astrological forecast. Are you able to give an opinion on whether Donald Trump is going to be? <laughs> I, I see your smile like, oh, Patricia, you're not really asking me that. <laughs> <laughs> From, you know, if you're able, because of his astro astrology, which you obviously know, uh, and yeah. the forces uh, that you all obviously clearly know. How does that seem to jive for you? Um, I, 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 t I tell you what, it's, it's, it's really a difficult one uh, with, with predicting who's going to win an election. Um, it's, yeah, because I, I, I can sense that that's what you're pushing for. Um, well, you know, maybe not in necessarily the individual, but let's, you know, if we talk about the energies of what he is trying to accomplish and what the opposition is determined to do, which is take everybody into a pretty much a communist, socialist, communist, um, one world order environment. Mm -hmm. 
uh, with a heavy concentration in the states, and Trump represents resisting that. I think, I mean, he appears to be resisting that and trying to um, preserve nationalism, another kind of energy. So, from the from, let's forget about the the people and talk more about the energies. One is the there's no question that the left in America wants to impose a very a very diminishing on many levels um, socialist socialist slash communist regime, which kind of fits with what you're saying about the age of Aquarius being all about equality. So that's yeah. why I'm trying to get at here. Rather, I'm not interested in superficial uh, predictions, but uh, more about the energies and from what you said, it sounds like that fits better than a Donald, Donald Trump uh, presidency. But uh, I'm curious about what you think. I, I'm not the astrologer. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's going to be before the winter solstice um, conjunction, um, isn't it? it? It's in November, isn't it? It's November 3rd. Yeah. So... Um, I haven't, I haven't, what, what I usually do is I, I look at the, uh, the chart of, of um, the candidates and see what uh, their aspects look like um, after the uh, results have come in. And if they've got kind of quite positive aspects, um, it usually looks good. And if they've got negative ones, I haven't actually done that yet. Um, but in just talking in terms of what we're heading into, um, yet yeah, definitely a more social, um, socialistic kind of regime, I, I would say. But the, but the thing about, um, like with, with Pluto, you need a lot of consciousness to, to deal with the depth of it um, so that you're not just kind of, in terms of evolution, America is kind of probably around teenager sort of age. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Like, like because of the, it's a new country, let's face exactly. it. And it's still learning. You still have to go with the cycles of the planets. Each time they come around, there's, there's a learning, uh, a time uh, where you can learn something new and think, okay, um, this has come around again. Let's do it differently. Uh, with with everything that's going on, with things like uh, equality, it doesn't really suit Donald Trump's way of being. In a so way, so in other words, in, in his platform doesn't vibe with what you're saying about the astrological picture. That's very yeah. interesting. Yes, yes. I mean, this is, this is kind of early days, but because of, you know, this upsurge that we've seen in um, groups that in the past have been, um, you know, thought of as less than or um, socially inferior or in any of those, those ways, they, they're, it's coming up now. Um, and it's a struggle. It is like a battle. It is like a battle of it, these it's two forces. a struggle forces. and a battle. Yeah, it really is uh, on on every level. It's just immense. Yeah, I mean, you've and, got people hating each other because they they don't wear the mask, or they do wear the mask, or they do believe in it, or they don't believe in it, or they hate Donald Trump, or they love Donald Trump. It's just you know massive yeah. polarity, extreme yes. polarity, and global. Why well, I say massive because it's extreme polarity and it's globally extreme. And yes. so something's got to give here. Yes, exactly, exactly. And um, that's why you have to be aware of the events that are going to take place in, uh, in October uh, when Mars joins the party. Um, you know, there'll, there'll probably uh, a lot of demonstrations, that sort of thing will turn over into violence. Um, but we've worked out that. You're saying more. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there are t there are times where there are there, there's more of it. So um, yeah, we we've already seen it uh, happening this year. 
but it's also going to kind of come up again uh, in October, uh, especially. And, and look out, you know, for, for around full moons and new moons, because they always uh, trigger what's going on, uh, the, the bigger transits that are going on. Yeah. Boy, it sounds like October is going to be a real test. October full moon. I'm not leaving my house. <laughs> um, what about the, I don't know if you're able to share with us some ideas about this, but what about the Earth herself? Because we've, we've seen planet Earth Gaia enjoying this beautiful repose. Well, I've seen just the most extraordinary footage of animals walking in and out of cities and, you know, peacocks walking down the streets of Madrid and the animals always looking around like, uh, where are the humans? What's happening here? So, the, you know, the, the, a very beautiful benefit of this horrible situation is that Earth is getting a rest, the oceans are getting a rest. It, what does this look like for the planet herself as we move through this difficult time? Yeah, well, um, the one good thing about uh, Aquarius uh, is that it um, is very interested in, uh, like, like if, you, if you look at the, the god Uranus, okay, so um, he's, he's, the, he's the maverick of, of, of the solar system, but he's also associated with Prometheus, and Prometheus uh, in the myth he uh, wanted to enlighten us human beings because he had an affinity with us. He, he'd made us from out of clay and the dirt under his fingernails and fashioned us little human beings. And um, Athena had breathed life into us, but Zeus or Jupiter was king of the gods and he didn't want us to become enlightened, so he forbade it. But Prometheus, which, whose name literally means foresight, so he knew the punishment he was going to get when, when he did this, but one night he sneaked off into uh, Hephaestus's forge, put some fire in a fennel stalk and um, gave it to human beings. Um, and they woke up and became godlike. Much and like Zeus the apple. Was and yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's uh, another story. And of course, Jupiter was furious. And as a punishment, he chained Prometheus up in the Caucasus Mountains. And every day an eagle came down and pecked out his liver. And every night it grew back in an eternal suffering. So if you think of anybody throughout history that stood up and said, no, this isn't right, we, we need to enlighten people about the truth here. Um, they've usually been shot down. You know, Copernicus that said, hang on a minute, uh, the sun doesn't go around us, we go around the sun. He, he, he was um, locked up and Darwin, who questioned the religious beliefs at the time, he was vilified. Martin Luther King, who said, hang on, you know, all human beings are equal. Well, he ended up getting shot. Um, so there's something about uh, Uranus and, and, and Aquarius that is very much to do with uh, wanting to create utopia in a way, uh, a, perfect, uh, a perfect universe. Uranus is, think of pure, rational, masculine thought. So everybody has its place, everybody's in it. The only thing is that it's not very uh, friendly to the moon. And the moon is to do with the body and feminine. Um, so it's all kind of quite rational and scientific. But, you know, that could cause um, people to say, right, okay, we want a better planet. How are we going to create that? And it won't be with um, kind of airy fairy ways. It will be through hard science. Um, there'll be a lot more of that. But Aquarius does rule um, things like ecology and humanity as a whole, the planet as a whole. So um, I think that could be quite hopeful, actually. Except that what, what I'm feeling here is what, what about the divine feminine? I'm sure other people will be yeah. thinking so 
we're describing this, we're coming out of the Saturnian male dominance. We're coming into the Aquarian rational male. Um, yeah. How does that work with the rising, clearly the rise of the feminine, which we are experiencing in so many ways? Where does that fit in? Well, I think that fits in with the fact that Aquarius, it's, um, it's neither masculine or feminine. Right. Yeah, but it's sort of, of, a, of a real movement here that so much, we, we speak so much right now about the divine feminine and there's so much female nurturing energy coming into the foreground. So is that a reflection of a balance of uh, the Aquarian vibration as you've described it? I, I, I think it is. But what worries me, in a way, is that, um, and we see it in things like um, childbirth, for instance, which is a very uh, visceral, you, you know, it's to do with the body. And a lot of young girls coming up, they're, they're kind of feeling quite squeamish about it. There's something about the body. And, and if you think of Uranus, he wanted... Um, I mean, the, the, the myth of Uranus is that, um, so he's the idealistic sky god, um, you know, logical, rational, pure, masculine thought. And he comes down and he mates with the earth goddess Gaia, who's dirty and messy and chaotic. And uh, they're both really fertile. So she produces all this, these offspring. And Uranus looks at them and he's absolutely horrified because they're not perfect. So he pushes them back into her belly, into Tartarus, so they don't offend his sight. Um, and so wow. that image, that, that image, I think, is also one that is, that is coming through. Um, that the... You know, because that, um, like robotics and combining new to that Uranian new technology with the body even. And also, I could see eventually us not even giving birth uh, naturally. But um, if you think of the cesarean rates, that sort of anything to do with the body and trying to create this perfection, you see it all over the internet, young people just trying to look yes. and be perfect yeah you know that that that's the side of it that i don't like and that's the thing there's good and bad to to all of this there's it, there's always lightness and darkness yin and yeah. yang you know you know you, it's almost like the light needs the dark but that's and and with with the darker aspects it is no pain no no gain no change because, um, and that's why going through these uh, very, very difficult transits that we've got at the moment, um, it's almost like we have to, to get through it, to come to the other side. And I think that's a common thread in any kind of doctrine or any, any you know, belief system was all talking about, we've got to get through this difficult, the, the Syrian High Council talk about the desert days. This is the last push. You've got to go through it and it's going to be painful and the dawn is ahead. And this is a common, I think, a common theme in most belief systems. We're in it. Yes, and yeah. Forward, you know, the optimist will say we're in it and looking forward to the dawn. Pessimists will say we're in it and we're going down. But I don't know any people that are in that mindset. Well, well the thing about Aquarius, because it rules new technology, um, there is dangers with that you know, robots taking over our work, um, even driverless cars, so you don't even think about things. Um, what, what, what is it to be human in, in this Aquarian age? These are big moral questions we, we've got. The thing about um, uh, even people who, who are trying to uh, create immortality, you know, with, through uh, the medical world, um, I don't think we will get there because Saturn, um, he, he rules time. Everything has its time and everything will die. And, and so you would, you would get tremendous hubris if, if, you, if you even attempt to, to 
to try and get immortality, which a lot of people are, are um, you know, putting a tremendous amount of research into that. But I don't think we will ever achieve it because of Saturn. Saturn says, no, um, everything must die. And, and, and that is the case. That is a, a universal law. It is the universal Thank law goodness. of all creation, not just humans, right? Yes. All creation yes. has its, its spring of its days, the winter of its days, in this beautiful cyclical process called life. Yes, so, and that's okay. why, yeah, I was just Go going ahead. to say that's why when Saturn ruled, it was known as the Golden Age because he understood that. Um, and when you think the two most joyful words to describe Saturn are duty and responsibility, and you think, <laughs> oh, you know, that would have been a fun <laughs> time. But, it, but it, he understood that if you want a good harvest, you have to do the hard work. You have to, in a way, suffer being incarnated in our physical bodies. And I'm Capricorn, so I can really tell you, I oh. can feel that. Fortunately, I'm Sag rising, which gives me the freedom and the fire and the liberation. But boy, it isn't an easy sign, is it? No, so, I'm a Capricorn as well. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> well, Helen, if we were to encapsulate or, or somehow try to bring out the most salient uh, points that you've brought up. In, and by the way, I love your, your wisdom and your knowledge of mythology and bringing that into this astrological perspective really resonates with me because I'm a devotee of Greek and Roman, just for starters, oh. mythology, <laughs> all mythology. But um, if you could, if, if, if we were to summarize or let's say encapsulate in a few ideas, what we're in, What's happening in this next, just to, just to re-emphasize like that uh, ominous <laughs> October bit, uh, what yeah. can people be looking at uh, for this next, uh, the end, up till the end of the year? You already said it, but if you can just make it really succinct and yeah. then yeah, things sure. that are in, on the horizon, like uh, 2022, which sounds pretty intense, as yeah, we think, yeah. our talk. Yes, the, the thing is, there is so much wrong in our society. And, you know, the, the wheels are really turning at the moment of, of change and evolution, uh, big time. And, that, and that's marked when we, when we have the, the, the big outer planets and, and their motions through the heavens. They reflect what's going on here, here on Earth. And so, this, yes, this is a very difficult year, the whole year. Is, is very difficult, um, but there are, uh, there has been a lot of good points because of, of, of that human spirit that comes out and, and like the Neptune, in, it's very powerfully placed in its own sign of Pisces. So, so that side of humanity that is so compassionate and caring and it's to do, it's like the higher octave of love a Venus. Um, it's really coming to the fore. Uh, we, we've got Uranus in, in the earthy sign of Taurus to do with think, uh, thinking, yeah, okay, what do we really value? What changes do we need to make to, to the planet? And, and it also rules things like um, money. So we are seeing changes in the whole money side of things. Now, um, there is hopefulness with um, the winter solstice this year. I, I, I think it's a, a very interesting chart, and especially as it coincides with the exact conjunction at naught degrees Aquarius, um, <clears throat> between creating uh, a better uh, situation for us. Sorry, just have a drink. Me too. And <clears throat> yeah, the thing is, there, there's, there's always light and dark. And uh, going into the age of Aquarius, it's got um, that side of it. And the young people are much more attuned to it than we are. They, they are, they're almost like different beings. 
Yes, it's so true. Completely. And there's such a, even in the in the polarity of, of so many aspects, there's also a polarity in the newer generations and the older generations that is much more extreme, I think, than there's been in the past. Yeah, well, 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 just think about all the things that Aquarius rules, and they're right on it. They, they, they're absolutely yes, on the stage. Right. That's, that's very exciting. What a beautiful perspective you've given us. I thank you. I, I, uh, I was hoping this talk would be like this, the bigger picture, <laughs> the really bigger picture, instead of just this is there and this is there and that's what it means. But, you know, uh, applying this to a bigger perspective of um, civilization. Yeah, exactly. The, Humanity. It's, it's the yeah. evolution of human beings where, you know, that's on the line at the moment. Yeah. It really uh, is. Um, well, praying that we, we go through this dark part or whatever we want to call this. Like you said, there's dark and light, but there's no question that yeah. to, to reach a liberation, there's struggle underway. And it's going to continue for a while. And hopefully that 2022 marker is going to be the upside of that rather than the downside of that for the well, United well, States. Yeah, if you, if you can think of us going through the birth canal, <laughs> Saturn yeah. is, the, is the contractions, you know, the hard labor, and, and Pluto is that kind of, um, it's, it's like a volcanic expulsion into something new you know it's it's got that volcanic energy about it and um, yeah. whatever happens in you know in 10 years time we'll look back at the this epoch changing time and think wow yeah that that was that was when a lot of things changed yeah i, th and I think that's important to people who are so struggling with this crisis we're in and when's it going to end and what's coming and whatever to, to know that you know we will look back at this too yes and yes. Uh, we will be i think in, in some ways just blown away by the fact that we were here to participate in this too and that it represented like you said a marker or just like this cannot be denied there's nothing gradual about this there was the big you know the moment when earth stopped and you know what force aside from the political forces at hand and my own opinions about who's doing what still to be able to stop an entire population global population in its tracks there's yeah. more at work at work here than just political manipulation and that you yes, know in, in yes. ways that are very actually exciting even though it's frightening and and it's limiting and whatever in ways that are also exciting we're here for this like okay Bring it on. Let's see what this means for a yes. global population to just stop in its tracks. Wow, that is really something. And yeah. to see the Earth, Mother Gaia, react powerfully with the oceans. The, the whales are going crazy with birthing and the dolphins and, you know, beings, animals walking in through the cities and the oceans healing. It's also very, very important. So... Thank you, Helen. I have really learned a lot from you today. I'm so honored and thrilled. We're going to have to do this again, okay? <laughs> Wonderful. After we Wonderful. get through the winter solstice. Yes. All right, you guys. So, um, again, I've been with the wonderful Helen Sewall, and her website, which I will, of course, put up for you, as I said, is astrologicalinsights.co.uk. UK. And when I hang up with her, I'm going to book myself a reading because I can't wait <laughs> to have her do that for me. So take care, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And thanks again, Helen. It's been very enlightening. Thank you, Patricia. All Thank the best. You. All the best to you, too. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. I'll see you soon. Thank you for tuning in to Beyond the Matrix. And you see what I mean? The program that invites you vehemently to think outside the box of convention. Take care. Bye, everybody.